Hello, GovPond winners, and welcome back. Today's video is all around CPARs, contractor performance assessment reporting system. Yes, it's a mouthful. What's glorious about CPARs, they capture the performance of typically a prime contractor. It is something that a contracting officer representative or contracting officer will trigger this event in order to evaluate a prime contractor in a variety of areas, very similar to like a Yelp review or any other type of reviews out there. The only difference is this is how they evaluate government contractors instead of maybe hair, food, etc. So you are in luck because the only way a person could walk you through the CPAR system somebody like myself, you know, with uh, over 10 years of government contracting experience is to receive a request to respond, which is beautiful. You'll see more very soon. So my flagship company was asked to respond to a CPARS from some most recent work with the government agencies and agency. You are in luck. My flagship company was recently asked to respond to a CPARS for some recent government work. So you're actually going to see yours truly responding in real time. Key information will be blurred. So get ready, enjoy. Please comment below if there's any other things you would like to see. Have fun, enjoy checking out CPARS. For certain contracts, you may be issued a CPARS. And this is an example of the CPAR system. You can see my name is here. All of the contact information would be under here. And the CPARS action list is here. You can see upon logging in, I have a pending action. You can also search for reports, conduct some admin, view report evaluations. What's really important in this system is once this is complete, you want to make sure you save a PDF copy of this for your records. Because in the past, I've experienced difficulties in which I was unable to retrieve a CPAR. It is what it is. So the contract number is listed as well as the period of performance, when it is due, and the username. I suggest you complete this as soon as possible because contracting officer representatives are typically involved as well as often a contracting officer. They have a ton of things to do and trying to hunt you down to compute to for you to finalize an evaluation on your work. It's not top of their list. So you want to make their life easier, not be a pain. So this section has our contractor information. Um, contract information is listed here. Any kind of miscellaneous. So they put the name of the contract and they described all of the work here. Here, if you desire, you could advocate to have a small business who was a subcontractor listed here. Um, this once happened to us in our early years where a big prime did that. And so K Parks has um, CPAR ratings, but again, it's not really something I've advocated for as well as none of my subcontractors have asked for such to be allocated for. Why? Because when you think about it, how can the government best evaluate your subcontractor's performance? It puts them in a tough situation. So it may be something you want to advocate for. It may not be. Who knows? And that is why the federal government also has past performance questionnaires, because that way it helps alleviate any of this. Because remember, it's about making their life easier. Okay, so I'm gonna show you our, I mean, all this is real. <laughs> it's real time, it's our ratings. Some information has been blurred just for privacy uh, purposes, but this is literally the most recent CPAR. Okay, so you see they have a summary about the amazing KPC team. Aw, 
We are elite. Okay. So the first item here is eva uh, quality. They rated us exceptional. The next is schedule. So completing kind of things on time, processes, procedures, however they kind of think of the term schedule. There's little pop-ups that you can click here uh, that provides more information as far as that. Are we on time? Are we doing milestones, et cetera, et cetera. And while you'll see these pop-ups, remember people are typing this in. People are typing this in who have other jobs, right? So some may provide a huge book, others may just give you a little bit of information. So they highlight some things that we've done as well as we received exceptional scores. Cost control, exceptional. Management, exceptional. Small business, exceptional. Regulatory, we got past rating was NA, and then it says satisfactory, and then it says comments NA. I mean, hey, I'll still take satisfactory when you see here complied with contract clause, complied with requiring uh, quality, excuse me, <laughs> has a contractor complied with the reporting requirements, has a contractor complied with the quality assurance? I would say we have, and that we're exceptional in this area, but at the same time, I know that there's also some politics involved sometimes when they provide CPARs or just in, in evaluations in general. If you look at the psychology of workplace evaluations, people kind of refrain from giving everybody fives. It's like, oh, we have to find one thing to kind of ding you on. Hey, or maybe we deserve this. I don't know. Personally, do I think we deserve this? Of course not. My team's amazing. And you can see the past rating was not applicable. So, you know. Maybe they didn't want to put not, not applicable twice. Who knows? What I do know is in the grand scheme of things, satisfactory is still amazing. It's when firms receive something less than satisfactory. That is not good, right? And I'm not going to argue with the evaluator over this. And then we see if they have anything under other areas they don't. Um, the, the contact information will definitely be blurred here, but the contact, the point of contact is here, which is great because other agencies are able to contact the point of contact and ask detailed questions. And that's what's awesome about CPARs is there's no questions asked. It's, hey, <laughs> here's the evidence. Here is an actual evaluation on this contracting firm. I'm able to confirm it. I can, you know, download it. I can review it. I'm speaking as if I was federal government. And that's what's so great. Uh, here at the end, what you do, and I'll do this here in real time, is you write whether you concur or do not. In my 10 plus years, I have never chosen, I do not concur. Never, ever, ever. I always concur. I've never had a situation, ever. Uh, name and title. So it auto-populated everything, which will be blurred but it's great, everything is here. And then if you want, uh, you can put any kind of comments that you desire. Again, it's not something that I'm, I'm concerned about. What I'm concerned about is the bigger picture that my flagship company has proof of exceptional past performance with a federal government agency, period. That's what's of importance. And so when other agencies take a look at this, it provides trust, it provides comfort, and it shows, you know what? We could we could work with this company. Why? Because there's evidence. It's social proof. It's like the Yelp, the Google comments in YouTube <laughs> of government contracting. So we're just going to submit this to validate. So you literally can see, and again, some of the information will just be um, removed here, but it's been saved. And then what happens is it's then forwarded back to them. And while this version is incomplete, and again, some of this information will be blurred, you at least again have a copy, which is awesome because this contract alone had a value of a little less than $10 million. So that's what's so amazing because once again, other federal agencies get to see, wow, this is the type of um, contractor we would have if we make an award to K-Parks Consulting, which is excellent. So once again, this was just a kind of brief walkthrough of the CPAR system.
The interesting thing around CPARs, there are different rules around the type of contracts that should be evaluated. Usually they're over $250,000 or so. And every year it's supposed to happen, but you have to keep in mind that government contracting is not black and white. It's so many shades of gray, so many shades of gray. So because of that, there have been times where we didn't receive CPARs. We actually had one agency, which I will never name, who literally told us, yeah, we know, but we don't do those. We're not submitting them. <laughs> and it had nothing to do with our performance. They love us. They're just like, yeah, we ain't doing it. And I'm like, okay. I mean, again, that's why you have past performance evaluations if needed, or sometimes agencies will accept um, a brief summary of the work and just the contact information. So it's up to you if you really want to push and strong arm an agency to, to give you an evaluation because you have to think about the potential side effect. It's no different than you. If you go to a restaurant, they keep hounding you, please evaluate us, please evaluate us, please evaluate us, please evaluate us. You may give two or three stars because you're annoyed. And I'm not suggesting that's going to happen. And I'm not suggesting you're annoying. And I'm not suggesting the government will or would be annoyed by you. What I'm saying is that as someone who's extensively studied psychology, you have to be patient and mindful and think long term. Okay. So with all that said, I really, really hope you found this helpful. And again, thank you so much for supporting me, supporting the channel. Comment below. Have a glorious, glorious day.